In SQL, the moment it adds support for these recursive common table expressions, which as you will see are more like uh, iterations than recursions, it's said that uh, SQL is uh, Turing complete so that you can write uh, an entire program in SQL alone. And there are some demonstrations over the internet where people implemented all sorts of uh, very strange things. But basically for your day-to-day -day use cases, this is a very good addition because it allows you to, to build a resource set dynamically based on some condition that you, you can express and you can traverse uh, uh, hierarchical structures uh, in this way. So let's see exactly how this works. So as I told you previously, using a common table expression, you can take a derived table, give it an alias, and then later on reference it. That's how common table expressions uh, work. However, there is a new class called recursive, which allow you to iterate recursively over a result set. And this is being supported by Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres, and MySQL. So let's say the top most common databases. I don't uh, use DB2 a lot. That's why I don't uh, include, uh, include it in these checks. But uh, most, uh, most of those features are included uh, also uh, and are supported by DB2 as well. So if I want to compute the consecutive uh, uh, number sum, the sum of consecutive numbers, of course, using a programming language like Java, this is very easy. You just use an iteration and in each iteration, you can include there uh, the consecutive sum. So you need to retain, of course, you have this sum and you keep on, on each iteration, you keep on adding uh, each uh, integer there to, to the sum and in the end, you will have the result set. However, normally you would think that uh, you cannot uh, do this uh, using SQL, but however, you can do that. And according to the standard, you can use this with recursive uh, common table expression. Now the standard tells you that uh, you should use also this recursive keyword. However, not all databases support it. Like if you're using Postgres or MySQL, this is how you should write a recursive query. You need to use with and you need to use recursive as well. However, if you're using Oracle or SQL Server, you have to drop this recursive keyword because it's not supported. So your recursive query starts with with, it's just like a regular common table expression and the database figures out whether uh, this one is uh, iterates or not over the result set based on, uh, based on its uh, definition. So keep, uh, keep that in mind. In our case, let's assume that we were using Postgres or MySQL, how you can express the same for a loop using SQL, you, you can do that using this recursive common table expression. So just like any common table expression, you give it a name. This is consecutive number here, consecutive number sum. And we define two columns that are being included in the result set. One is the value of uh, I, which is the counter that we keep on increment. And uh, the other one is the consecutive sum. And every recursive common table expression starts with the first query, which is called the anchor query, is the one that defines the first record. In our case, we start from a record that will have the values of uh, zero and zero. So uh, I it has the value of zero, consecutive sum has uh, also the value of zero. Uh, we're using then union all, why? Because you keep on adding records to your result set. So if this, uh, if this, uh, were the first record. Now we are going to add the second, the third, the fourth iteratively. So we're using union all for that. We don't use union because union tries to remove duplicates. And in our case, there's no way that we're producing duplicates because as you will see, we are going to increment this value. That's why we have to use union all. And then comes the recursive member. This second query called the recursive member. This is going to be executed until no record is going to be produced. So until it gets to the point where an empty result set is going to be produced, which in our case is when uh, the value of um, the i variable is going to reach uh, the value of five. Until it reaches the value of five, this select statement is going to be executed over and over and over. And here we will see that we are going to pass the previous values 
to this query. So first we'll have the value 0, 0, then we'll compute the values 0 plus 1, 0 plus 1 plus 0, and we will pass those again and again and again. And we build a result set. And in the end, of course, because this is a common table expression, you can use, uh, you can use an alias, you can use its alias and select uh, from it. So basically this is how you can compute the same data that we uh, built previously using um, the for loop. So how it works? As I said, the first query selects uh, the first uh, record, which is zero, zero. You can, uh, you can see how we keep on building this result set. So this is the first record. And then the values that are produced, all the values that are produced by the last step are going to be sent to the next iteration. So the value of zero becomes is going to be sent here and here to the next iteration. So when the next iteration comes in, it's going to, it's going to be given the values that were calculated previously. And that's why we can uh, calculate it, the value of zero plus one, zero plus one plus zero, one and one. And then we get to the next iteration. This is the third iteration where you build the third uh, record. You provide the values one, one, and then we iterate this two, and then you have uh, three for the consecutive sum, and so and so until you reach and uh, the value of five becomes five, and then you stop the iteration. In the same way, you can build uh, the consecutive number sum until a given value, in which case you just have to use the where clause to filter uh, that record. Now, of course, this was defined using Postgres and MySQL because this is completely valid from an SQL perspective. In SQL, you don't really need to have a from clause. Using a select zero and then another zero is, com is a perfectly valid SQL uh, statement because this one builds a, sing a single record using two column values two cells uh, where you have the values zero and zero. Of course, this doesn't work in Oracle. If you're using Oracle, you have to select from dual and you have to drop the recursive keyword because that's not supported. So you can see that the difference is minimal. So it's just you remove the recursive and uh, you have to use from dual. And in SQL Server, the same like in Oracle, you don't have to use, you, you shouldn't use that recursive keyword and uh, you can still select uh, zero, 00 without providing that from uh, dual but as you can see the the rest of the query stays uh, the same so it doesn't uh, uh, change 